Tonight, as we continue our segment five reports on the aftermath of Vietnam, we'll take you on an incredible journey. In April of 1975, the North Vietnamese began a final assault on the South. Province by province, they moved on toward the Delta. Thousands of people had already fled South Vietnam, but hundreds of thousands who wanted to leave were still there with no way to get out. They included 12 members of the family of Dick and Jermaine Swanson. Jermaine's restaurant in Georgetown is 10,000 miles and seven years away from the race against time, which sent Dick Swanson back to Vietnam. Now Dick says he only remembers the fear of that trip as a dull panic, 72 hours of it, 72 hours which seemed like years. Dick Swanson was a combat photographer for Time and Life magazines when he married Germaine Locke in 1969. In 1971, they left Vietnam and Germaine's family to move back to Washington. Four years later, the final sweep of North Vietnamese troops began, the last assault of the 10,000-day war. It was headed for Saigon. We heard the news, and also I, I sensed that Vietnam was going to fall pretty soon. And I told Dick that one of us has to go home to uh, pick up my family. Jermaine drove me to the airport the next day, and it was a very quiet ride to the airport. Neither one of us spoke. And uh, I got on the plane at Dulles and arrived in Saigon on the 26th of April. Through family uh, connections, we got through the, the uh, Vietnamese perimeter fairly easily but we had difficulty getting through the perimeter into the American compound uh, by waving my press pass and yelling Chin Fu or government. Uh, we sort of bullied our way into the uh, American compound. And I nonchalantly walked into a no entry area and sat down and interviewed this uh, State Department fellow as a, as a Time Magazine correspondent. Uh, and as just as nonchalantly asked him to stamp my papers so I could get the family into the staging area. And he gave me a, a very knowing look and reached over and took his stamp and went bang. And basically we, we were free and clear. The takeoff was at dark, at dusk, and the, it was a C-141 Air Force airplane. And they had taken the side doors off the aircraft and the gunners were standing in each door with flare pistols uh, to ward off uh, any heat-seeking missiles that might be fired at the aircraft. Uh, with the doors off, the, the roar inside was deafening, and 150 Vietnamese, and including myself, were crouched on the floor holding our ears. It was just such a, uh, uh, it was a very mean departure. After that terrible exit from Saigon, we flew to Guam and then to California. Uh, I have this bittersweet memory of Jermaine's mother looking out the window as the California coast slid underneath the aircraft. Jermaine met her family at Dulles Airport, and she said the next 24 hours were filled with much laughing, much talking, and long periods of silence when nothing really could be or needed to be said. I was thinking how, how terrible it was that this family once again had to flee another country. They had fled North Vietnam in 1954 and now South Vietnam in 1954. 75. Uh, but I was also grateful and uh, uh, very happy that we were all together. I'm an only child, and I love big families. Seven years later, and 10,000 miles away, the Swanson and Locke family is still together. And for the first time, Jermaine Swanson's family knows they'll never need to run again.